NFTs are blowing up with millions of dollars changing hands every single day. These NFTs are enabling digital assets like this crypto kitty named Dragon to sell for over $170,000, or this clip of LeBron selling for over $200,000 or Logan Paul selling his NFT and earning over $5 million. Yes, that's $5 million. So what are NFTs? How do they work? And should you get involved before all this gets even more mainstream? Well, if you watch to the end of this video, hopefully you'll be able to speak the NFT language and become a semi-expert in this space. Hey, I'm Kevin, and on this channel, we talk strategies to help you along on your financial journey. If you're interested at all, consider subscribing to this channel, liking this video, and let's get started. So NFT stands for non-fungible tokens. This is in contrast to fungible tokens. Fungible tokens are digital assets that can be replaced for one another, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or other cryptocurrencies. For example, every dollar bill is the same, so I can interchange them not worrying about which dollar bill I'm using. These fungible tokens could also be broken down further, Take the dollar bill for example, you could break that down to quarters, dimes, and nickels. Or take Bitcoin, you could have a single Bitcoin or a fraction of a Bitcoin. Now non-fungible tokens are the opposite. These represent unique digital assets that are one of one and can't be interchanged with one another. And these NFTs also can't be broken down into smaller bits. For example, there's only one true Mona Lisa painting in this world. And even if you try to copy it, it doesn't change the fact that the original still exists. And with the Mona Lisa painting, you can't really break it down further into smaller bits. Because the data for these tokens are stored on the blockchain, usually Ethereum, these tokens can't be replicated or destroyed. Each transaction regarding a token is tracked, meaning you could really easily authenticate the NFT, see who created it, and see who currently owns it. That means even if you do copy the image and create your own NFT, it's obvious it's a copy because the digital signature and the data of that NFT will be completely different from its original. NFTs in general have been getting a lot of attention, partly because big names like Gary V, Chamath, Mark Cuban, Elon Musk have all been talking about NFTs as well as investing in a lot of NFTs as well. Now, one of the popular early use cases of NFTs was through the blockchain game called CryptoKitties back in 2017, where you can breed, trade, and sell digital cats. This is similar to the game Neopets back in the day, where you can have really rare pets that you can customize and tweak. But in this case, each crypto kitty is represented by a token on the blockchain that can't be replicated, taken away, or destroyed. These crypto kitties can also be traded on the open marketplace. For example, the Dragon Crypto Kitty was sold for over $170,000. And today, the buy now price of that kitty is over $800,000. Games and NFTs are like the perfect match. I mean, even today, people are already spending a ton of money on in-game items, but technically don't really belong to them. With NFTs, th these in-game items can be attached to a token that can be traded on the open market. And even if the game developer goes away, those tokens belong to you. NFTs can open up another revenue stream for game developers. For example, they can attach a transaction fee to uh, every time the item is transacted on, or even set up a royalty structure where every time it changes hands, the company gets a kickback as well. Nowadays, you could even buy virtual land, for example, in the Axie Infinity world, where nine plots of very rare land sold for over $1.5 million. Apart from assets in a game, NFTs can represent a ton of different things, like property, to achievements, to domain names and other collectibles. One of the hottest areas right now of NFTs are actually digital art. Now the obvious difference here is that compared to physical art, you can't really hold on to a piece of digital art. With NFTs though, you can verify the authenticity of a piece of art by tracking the origins through all the transactions that have happened on the blockchain. Tons of artists have been making their digital art into NFTs through a process called minting. Minting is a term used to describe adding a new piece onto the blockchain with the actual art itself along with unique information to show who created it. You can also attach things like royalties onto these tokens where every time it changes hands, you, the artist, gets a royalty paid to you. Similar to marketplaces like eBay today, you can go on to NFT marketplaces and browse the millions of listings that are for sale, either buying now or through auctions. 
One prominent artist is named Beeple, who has been creating a drawing every single day for the last 13 years. In fact, Christie's will be auctioning off one of his pieces, which is a composite of his past 5,000 art pieces done over the last 13 years. This piece will be making history as the first digital art piece auctioned off at Christie's, and will likely smash records for prices as this piece is currently auctioning at $2.8 million. Now, we can't talk about NFTs without talking about CryptoPunks. CryptoPunks is a collection of 10,000 unique characters with different rarity that were initially given out for free. Now, you can't do anything special with CryptoPunks as they're basically just small pieces of art. But because of the scarcity, rarity, and special features on some of these characters, they're valued like collectibles. You could consider yourself really lucky if you got one of these in the early days for free because in the last year, the average selling price of a CryptoPunk is over $10,000 and some as high as a million dollars. I guess some people just really like the monkeys. People with large followings like celebrities and influencers are also getting into the NFT game. Logan Paul actually sold thousands of NFTs that were Pokemon inspired cards with drawings of him on it that netted him over $5 million just for that launch alone. So why? Why are people paying so much for something you can't even hold in your hand? Well, to that I ask, why are people paying so much for in-game skins? And you can't even cash out for those skins. There's a lot of things that make something valuable, but I think it boils down to a few things. Supply and demand, the rarity, intellectual property, and the uniqueness. First, supply and demand and rarity go hand in hand. Most NFTs are really limited, either having a few hundred or even one of one. Nowadays, people are going crazy over collectibles like Pokemon cards, and the same is in play here. With the supply of NFTs being low and the demand being so high, that just naturally drives up the price. Then, throw in IP or intellectual property. Trading cards are just cardboard with drawings on them, but it's the IP behind it that's valuable. If Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon decide to start up NFTs, it would immediately go mainstream because so many people like that IP. But if I were to start up NFTs, no one's gonna buy it and it's just gonna be blended in with everyone else. All that coupled with most NFTs being unique in some way, you have a perfect recipe for a thriving market with high demand and a ton of money changing hands. Remember, NFTs can be verifiable to be legit. So unlike physical collectibles, you don't have to go through all the hassle of legit checking something and seeing if you're being scammed or not. Now that you're in on all the hype, how do you get in and get involved? Well, you can do that in two ways. One, you can buy the NFT pieces. Or two, you can buy the cryptocurrencies that power the blockchain that most of these NFTs are built on top of. Buying NFTs is pretty straightforward. For one, you could buy booster packs that companies release that will give you a chance at say 10 different cards of different rarity. For example, I bought a couple of these Street Fighter booster packs that could contain a lot of different characters of different rarity. Or you can buy individual NFTs on the open marketplace like OpenSea, where you can browse NFTs from a ton of different areas like CryptoKitties, Cyberpunks, and more. On the other hand, you can buy the cryptocurrencies that power the underlying blockchain that a lot of these NFTs are built on top of, like the Ethereum network. In order for all these transactions to work, people have to pay with cryptocurrency. So as more people are exchanging NFTs, the more of that cryptocurrency is needed, driving up demand and in turn driving up the price of the cryptocurrency as well. Lastly, anyone can create an NFT. Whether you're a creator, an artist, or just someone that's curious, you can go on to these NFT marketplaces and mint your own NFT for a small fee, though some other marketplaces let you do it for free. Some of the most well-known marketplaces are OpenSea, Rarible, and SuperRare. All things considered, what are my thoughts? I think NFTs are here to stay. Just like the early days of the internet, YouTube, or Twitch, there's going to be a lot more use cases popping up over the next 3, 5, or 10 years. Right now though, I would be a bit cautious. Because with all the hype driving NFT prices up, everyone's just grabbing any NFT that they see. And this isn't really sustainable. And when the bubble pops, a lot of these NFTs will probably drop in price or become worthless before a more healthy long-term rise of NFTs takes place. Now, I'm not an expert, so if you do want to get into NFTs, do your research to find ones that are actually valuable and not just buy NFTs because you want to get in on this hype. Remember, don't invest what you can't afford to lose.
Now with all that said, thanks for watching, and I hope that you're now more familiar with this space and can understand all the hype that's been going on. Now if you found this video helpful, all I'd ask is for a simple click of that like button to help spread this knowledge to more people. As always, invest safe and see you in the next one.